So we are back out again and today we're going to do a little video on heel work. Now heel work is not one of our strong points um, for a few reasons. One, Ivy is a spaniel so she's designed to wiggle and zigzag and not walk slowly in straight lines with me. And also I find heel work really boring to train so I do not do half as much of it as I should. So I thought we would give it a go. Um, because it's definitely something we need to work on. So let's see how we get on. Ready? So to start off this session, I decided to do some work on making sure that Ivy knows the heel command. So when teaching heel work, I think it's always important that you know what your own criteria is so that you know what you're expecting the dog to learn. And it's probably worth noting that the sort of heel work that I'm teaching Ivy isn't obedience competition level heel work at all. It's heel work that I'm comfortable with with my little spaniel. You might want to be a bit more picky about your positioning than I am, but that's just your personal choice and you thinking about what you want to do with your dog. But what I'm doing with this Vex exercise is getting her to find the heel position, which for me is by my left side, facing the similar direction to what I am facing. And when she's in a position I'm happy with, I click and throw a piece of food out. So there are a few reasons why I'm choosing to throw the food out in this exercise. One is because I am very aware that I find it boring and I don't want her to find it boring. So by throwing the food, it's creating a bit more of an engaging reinforcement experience for her. So hopefully she won't find the exercise as boring as I do. Also because it allows us to reset so it means that she has to get out of position which then means she gets more repetitions of finding the correct position and as she's done this sort of exercise before it also allows me to up the ante just a tiny bit by throwing the food out in different directions which means she has to find the heel position from wherever she is around me which is just another way of me starting to proof the behavior slightly so that seemed to be working well, so now we are going to change the exercise slightly and I'm going to get her to try and stay in the heel position while I am moving on the spot. So I'm going to be turning around and on that occasion I clicked but she kept on moving so I just put her back into the position she was when I clicked and fed her from there. Not the best handling but we'll make do. But you'll see I'm turning and as she turns with me she's getting a click and then I'm feeding her in position for this exercise because I want her to hold the position by my side for this one. You can tell that she finds going anti-clockwise a lot more difficult than going clockwise, probably because it's requiring her to walk backwards and she's not got a um, great amount of rear end awareness. So that's our last repetition of that little exercise and now we have a little break and then we're going to progress on to actually moving forwards in our heel work. Now Ivy does obviously have some foundation training in heel work already, so we're starting off with just a few paces, but if you were starting at the very very beginning you would probably start with just one pace and you would gradually build up how many steps you're able to do with the dog at heel. But we started out with a few and then we've built up there to about seven or eight paces and we're just going to continue building up the distance that we can travel while she remains at heel. So during this session, Ivy actually did quite well at keeping a heel position that I found to be acceptable. Um, but I guess it is important to say what I would do when it goes wrong. And we have an example coming up here. So we turn around and then start walking back. But as you can see, her nose is down, she's distracted, and she's just a bit too far out of position for me. So all I do is reverse back to where we started that repetition, re-cue heel, and set off again. And that's it. She was then successful that time, so it gets clipped and rewarded for it. So then we go to up the ante again a bit more. So we're happy that she can walk straight lines. So now I'm going to introduce some turns. So you'll see she struggles a bit more on these. So we do that reset. We just go back to the beginning where I initially cued the behavior and start again. So essentially, when she gets things right, she gets clicked and rewarded for it. When she gets things wrong, we just reset and start again. Now, if I find that I'm having to reset a lot, it probably means that the exercise is a bit too tough for her. So if we keep having multiple errors, then I need to have a look at 
the setup of the exercise and whether it's too difficult for her on that day. And if it is, then I'll just lower the criteria on what I'm expecting. Because what we don't want to happen is that the dog starts to get frustrated because they keep getting it wrong. That's going to be quite detrimental to the training, could be detrimental to our relationship with the dog. So I think it's really, really important that we keep those errors low and the reinforcement rate nice and high. So that's going to keep the session nice and engaging for the dog. And then another factor I added into this session was playing about with my pace. So I ask her for heel and then I set off. So I started off walking slowly and then I speed up without prompting her and she has to remain in that heel position by my side regardless of the speed that I'm walking. Which she actually did really nicely in this session, I was quite pleased with that. So we then stop, I click and reward. So lots of different things that you can play about with there, all without the need for equipment and all will help to strengthen your heel work. I think one of the most important things with all of our training though is that we make sure that we practice in lots and lots of different locations. So often when I was training dogs I would hear people say, oh but they always do it perfectly in the house or in the garden, but as soon as we step outside it all just goes to pieces. And it's really because we don't spend enough time proofing behaviours in the different locations that we expect our dogs to behave. So I will practice this on this playing field, I'll practice it over the fields, I'll practice it in the woods, I'll practice it on the pavements, around the streets, practice it as many different places as I can and that is going to help make it a really strong behaviour because she will know that heel means heel wherever we are. But that is all for now so I hope that all made sense. Any questions pop them in the comments and thanks for watching.